Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, it is 12 o'clock, so we will get started. Um, there will be people joining us. And we, if, if anyone is joining us for the first time in our series, we welcome you. We did have our first installment a couple of weeks ago. This is our Lunch and Learn Education Series focused on social media for newcomers. Um, this has been an exciting time. We're trying to help advocates um, become more savvy on social media and become a part of the conversation that's happening virtually, which is even more important now than ever. Um, this is part two. So today we are going to be covering Facebook and Instagram. Um, we are going to take you through section by section, um, different parts of these social media platforms um, and pausing for questions as we um, start new topics. Um, so if you look at the bottom of your screen, you will see that there is a Q&A button. Please feel free if you have questions to use that box. We will uh, take questions in the order that they're asked um, and we'll try to address um, as many questions as we can because we only have an hour. We might have to kind of bunch questions together, but we will do our best. Um, there's also a chat button. You can press the chat button if you have any technical questions. So if you're having problems with Zoom, please feel free to add your questions there and we'll try to answer those for you. Um, so today, welcome. I'm Jen Crawford. I'm the Executive Director of Physicians for a National Health Program, Minnesota. Um, and I will be introducing Jessica to you in a second. She will be doing the majority of our tutorials today. Um, as I mentioned, we'll be doing Q&A. And then at the end, we will talk about our next presentation, which is focused on Twitter. So if you're here for Twitter questions, you're going to have to save them until September 1st. So. Um, just a note about social media. Where and how you look at social media platforms is going to be different. So um, you can see here on the left is what it looks like in your browser window. So on your desktop, when you open your browser, your internet browser, so that could be Firefox, Chrome, Internet Explorer, Edge, any of those things. Um, they're all going to look a bit different, but they look mostly like this. So your navigation buttons are on the top, um, and then everything shows up underneath that. On your phone, which we have a photo here on the right, you can see things look a little bit different, and how you navigate around the site is different. So you can see your buttons are actually at the bottom. And that can look different depending on your phone. So I, all of this is to say, um, Jessica is going to be showing us um, Instagram and Facebook on her desktop today. So as you're using the site, if things look different, that's normal. So don't worry about that. Everybody's is gonna look a little bit different and we can do our best to help you through that. Um, and also doing a Google search helps as well. So I am going to uh, kick it on over to Jessica um, and let her start her share. Hi, Jessica. Jessica Koffenberg is the program coordinator for Healthcare for All Minnesota. Um, and she is going to be sharing with us um, the beginning of Facebook. I will be watching the chat and your questions. Um, so please feel free to make sure you're typing those in. Take it away, Jessica. Thank you, Jen. Good afternoon, everybody. Like Jen said, I'm going to go over um, Facebook and Instagram. So let me go ahead and start sharing my screen. Okay. So when you log on to Facebook, you, the default page is what is called your newsfeed. And your newsfeed is a list of status updates, photos, videos, links, et cetera, from different users that you're following. And this is being constantly updated. So if I were to refresh the screen, this would have new content on there. So on your um, newsfeed, and again, as Jen said, this is on my computer. So it's going to look a little different than if you're browsing on your phone. You have um, other areas of Facebook here on the left, a navigation bar here to take you to um, see your list of friends, different groups, events, pages, marketplace, um, memories, and save stuff, all that is on the left here. And then you can also see 
Another function on newsfeed is notifications. And notifications are updates about activity on Facebook, activity from your friends and followers. So you'll see that I have two notifications here. And if I were to click on this, I'll see that um, I had joined a group. And so um, it was approved for me to join the group and another one here as well and saying that I can post and comment in these groups now. So you'll also see notifications about if your friends posted something or if there's an event coming up, all of that will be here. Okay, so um, you know, in addition, I was saying that this is a, um, on your newsfeed, it shows different posts and photos from your friends. And if you post anything, it'll show up on your newsfeed as well. So you can hear, see here, here is um, some different posts that are showing up from different groups and pages that I follow. And um, next I wanna take you guys to an actual page. And so last time we went over Healthcare for All Minnesota, I searched for that and found that page. But today I'm gonna to show you how to find PNHP Minnesota. So you go over here to the search bar on the left and you're gonna type in PNHP Minnesota and you can see that it auto populates and you go ahead and click on that. And then here are the results. And here you can click on PNHP Minnesota and it will take you to their page. And the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do when you find a page that you wanna follow is that you want to like the page. And then after you like the page, you wanna go over here and click on follow settings. And we went over this last time and this just, um, the reason why you want to um, select this is because you want to make sure that this page is going to be um, higher up on your newsfeed, that you're making sure that you're seeing all posts and events that PNHP is posting. So you can see here, we're going to make it a favorite just to ensure that we see all content from PNHP. And then I'm going to go ahead and click update and that will save these settings. And I just wanted to pause real quick to see if anyone has any questions so far regarding um, the newsfeed or finding a page. Doesn't look like I see any questions coming in yet. Look in there, okay. I do see that we do have someone with their hand raised. Okay. Um, oh, what button did you click, Jill asked? Um, for, in, in regards to what, Jill? for liking the page or? Um, it, and then uh, uh, I, I apologize, I think it's Dia asked, um, oh, for setting as the favorites. Yep, so okay. for setting. Yep. yep, okay, so um, what you do is um, it's these three little dots here on the right side. If you click on that, then you'll see that there's follow settings. Click on follow settings. And then here you have options are favorites, default, snooze, or off. You wanna put it on favorites so that it's prioritized first in your newsfeed. I just click update on that. And then Jen, was there another question? I believe they had the same question. Um, so to, to just summarize, so Jessica searched for the page on Facebook. She clicked like, and then she used the three little dots to open the settings to make sure that she's seeing all of the posts. Yep. Great question. So in addition to following follow settings under these three dots, you also have the option to save and share. So you can share this page to your friends. So if you click on share, I can share this page on my newsfeed. So I can say, follow PNHP Minnesota. And then when I post that, it'll show up on my profile. So if you go back to your newsfeed by clicking this Facebook icon over here, you'll see that I have the option to click on my profile here or over here, you have two options as far as getting back to your profile. So here I'm gonna click on my profile 
and you will see that I shared it to my profile. So now my friends and followers will see that I liked PNHP Minnesota and that and encourage others to like the page as well. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back to PNHP Minnesota. And again, so you go to the search bar and type in PNHP Minnesota. Click on that. And here it is. So back to these three dots, we shared it. And another thing you can do to invite friends is just select invite friends. So I'm going to invite myself. And if I click send invites, it'll send an invite to my friend to like this page. Okay, let's make sure there are no questions. Jen, just feel free to stop me if any questions come in. You got it. Okay, thank you. Okay, <laughs> so next on, pay, on um, this page, you can see that there are events that have been posted and posts. So within a post, you're gonna see that there is copy here and then an image. And how you can interact with the page in the post are you have the options of liking it, you can comment. So I can't wait to attend. So you just type it in there and then click enter and it will post on, your comment will post. And then another thing you can do is you can share. So there are different options for sharing. So share now to your friends, would share the post immediately. It would not allow, um, would not allow you to add any comments or anything that, um, you know, how you wanna customize it for yourself. It will just automatically post it. If you click share to newsfeed, this gives you the um, capability to customize it. So I can type in, um, join me for this workshop. And then when I post it, it will show up on my profile as well. And so other options for sharing. So I can share to my story and stories are, um, on Facebook, they're only visible for 24 hours and they are at the top of your newsfeed. And this is um, a good thing to utilize for events like this so that it is prioritized on the top of your newsfeed that, so that your friends see um, events going on or um, if you're at an event and you wanna post a photo um, or just a comment about where you are, it's a great um, tool to utilize on Facebook because it always is gonna be on the top of your newsfeed. So I'm going to go back to our news feed so that we can see how I created that story and where it is. So again, to get back to my news feed, I click on the Facebook icon up here in the left hand corner. And you can see now I have a story. And again, the stories are only visible for 24 hours, but it's nice that it's at the top of the news feed and it would be the top of the news feed for all of your friends. So if you click on it, you'll see that it's the post. And Jessica, maybe yeah. we can highlight the fact that when you share something to your story, it's mm -hmm. just an image. Yes. So um, that's something to keep in mind. So um, story is really fun because it's at the very top of your friend's feed. Mm -hmm. um, it's the first thing that people see when they open their social media platform. This is great for photos of for example, events that you're at. Um, if there's something happening within the next 24 hours that people need to know about it, for example, a call to action. Um, if it was an image that said, call your legislators about the Medicare expansion, that would be a great opportunity to share an image and get it at the top of your friend's feed. So uh, th there's a difference between reposting mm -hmm. and your story. And Ann Jones had a question for us. Ann asks, to share an event or information from an organization's page, do we wait for the item to appear on our own feed rather than from the organization page? Nope, so you can share it right from the page. So if we go back to PNHP's page, you can see that there's an event right here. 
And so I can share this event. I can share it to newsfeed, which I just did, or I can send it in messenger to just an, an individual. So this would be a private message that no one else is gonna see. It's just between you and the other user. I can share to a group, so more than one friend, or I can share on a friend's profile. So let's um, do send in, send in messenger. So I'm gonna send it to Jessica, myself, and I'm gonna say, join me. Click send. And it will send, see what, so it show it's sent. It'll send me a private message saying, join me. And then another way to share, so share on a friend's profile. So I'm gonna share this on Jen's profile. And then you just click post. And now I'm gonna show you how, if you go to Jen's profile, you will see the post there. So you go back to the search bar and you type in your friend's name. It'll auto-populate, click on this. And you can see it here is Jen's. And you can see that it went on her um, profile page. Join me for this workshop, same information. And I can like, comment, same stuff. Does that answer your question, Ann? Okay. Great way to spread information quickly. The more people's um, pages that you share events on, the more their followers are also gonna see events. So this is a great way. Um, so just inviting someone, that's that's like the, the low pressure. If you wanna put the pressure on to really get your friends to join an event, share it to their page for sure. Yes, definitely. That's a good way to get more people involved. Okay, so the other options in share, I think we went over all of them. Maybe we went over story, we went in messenger, shared our group and shared to a friend's profile. Another thing you can do is you can just tag your friend in the comments. So I can say, Jen, um, please join me at this workshop. So instead of putting it on their page, you're just tagging them in it and it will still show up on their page and on their newsfeed for all their friends to see, but it's not an actual post that's going on there. It just will have their name on the bottom. So that's another way to engage your friends in um, different, you know, different pages and posts. So next I wanna show you guys um, going back to your main profile. So if you click on here, it'll take you back to the newsfeed. And then again, you have the two different options to get to your profile. You have over here or you have over here. So if I click on this button, it will take me to my profile. <clears throat> So your profile is, um, is, is basically the page has all of your information on it. So it's gonna have your photo, your cover photo, all of your info about yourself on here. And it's gonna have all of the posts that you have created or that you have liked or your friends have tagged you in. So I wanna go through how to create a post on here. So if I wanted to say, join me, for a workshop. And I'm just gonna make it really simple and that's all I'm gonna type in here. Um, so let's say if you wanted to add an image to it, you could add an image, um, different options, but I'm just gonna make it really simple here and just put in some text. And then you can tag friends in it. So again, if I wanted to tag Jen, I type her name in the search and it would populate and you click on it and then it shows that she's tagged. Let's say if I wanna tag Jessica, put her in here. Again, and there's two people that are tagged in it and then you click on done. And then you can see that I've tagged the two individuals and say, join me for a workshop. So then you have other options. Like I said, you can add photo, 
Um, you can do a check-in. So if we're at a location, you could, if you were at um, like the Pride Festival and you're volunteering for HCAM or doing any other call to action, you can type that in here and um, actually um, tag the location that you're at. And then from here, you would just click post. And that you can see once you've created a post, it'll show up on your profile. And it is also going to show up on your friend's profile. You can see right here how it showed up. And then it's also going to show up on your newsfeed. So again, going back to that top left icon and clicking on it, it shows up here. So let's say I created something and you're like, oh, I didn't mean to tag Jen in there. I didn't mean to tag Jessica in there. How can I fix that? So if you click on these three dots, you can go back to edit post. So let's say I really didn't wanna tag my friends in it, so I need to change that. So if I go back to tag people, I can click on the X and get rid of them and go back and it's gone. And then if I click save, you can see that the, our friends are no longer tagged in it. Another thing that you can do after you've posted is you can edit audience, you can edit the date, and you can simply delete it if you just um, made a post and then you, you don't want anyone to see it. So let's say that this was an accident and we're just gonna delete it. Are there any questions so far? No, okay. So I think that, oh, I wanted to go over hashtags. Let's go to hashtags again. So now I'm gonna go to Healthcare for All Minnesota's page. So if I type in Healthcare for All Minnesota in the search bar, you will see that it auto-populates and there's Healthcare for All Minnesota. So I'm gonna click on that and it'll take me to their page. So we've already liked their page. We already have our follow settings done over here. So you can see that they're set as our favorite. So we're gonna see their posts and events on the top of our newsfeed. So here's a post that has a hashtag in it. And a hashtag is a relevant keyword or phrase that is used in a post to categorize these posts. And it helps, you, um, helps them show more easily in a search. Clicking on that hashtag in any message or post will um, show you all other posts associated to that hashtag. So if I click on healthcare for all, it's gonna show me all the other posts out on Facebook associated to this hashtag. It is not limited to the people that you are, your, friends or, your friends or your followers. It's all the posts out there. So you can see there are 15,000 people posting about healthcare for all. So here are the different posts. So you see something, oh, you can, you know, like this. Um, you wanna comment on something. There's just different options here. And then another way to find hashtags is in the search bar. So I can type in hashtag Medicare for all. And it's gonna show me all the posts associated to Medicare for all. 32,000 32, people are posting about this. So you can see some example of some posts and you see right here how it says hashtag Medicare for all. So this is a great way to find other pages and groups and people who are interested in the same subject as you because it's gonna show you all of the posts associated with that. I see that there's a question. How, where, when I search for Healthcare for All Minnesota, I only get the Northfield group. Um, so are you typing in Healthcare for All Minnesota, like completely like this right here? 
because that's how it should come up. So Northfield chapter has Northfield on the end. So you can see we can click on this page. Oops. And you can see how it has Healthcare for All Minnesota and then Northfield chapter at the end. Why don't we go ahead and like that page and we'll practice how we can do our follow settings, put them as favorites and update. Are there so, any, oh, sorry. Are there any other questions? Oh, it's okay. I just wanted to say that is a great question. Um, one thing about Facebook is um, it's not always as intuitive as we would like it to be. Yeah. So um, if you type in H-C-F-A-M-N, um, it could give you a whole host of options that are not healthcare for all Minnesota. So the only way around that is to just kind of play around. Sometimes if you're looking for a page and you're like, I know PNHP Minnesota has a page, you can try writing PNHPMN or PNHP space. MN or Physicians for a National Health Program Minnesota. Sometimes you just have to try different ways to find things and that's the best way to do it, sadly. <laughs> it's not yeah. as, like I said, as intuitive as we would like it to be. Um, and so trying the abbreviation or the acronym or the full name is always suggested. Yes. Um, oh, and it looks like Dave Garibaldi had a question for us as well. Um, do a person's friends automatically see every post you share with them or only when tagged? <clears throat> so your friends see all of your posts on their newsfeed if you are making all of them public and you're not excluding a certain friend. And when you tag them, it'll show up on their page. So yes, so if you if you have a group of friends that you know um, are interested in your cause, um, you can actually create um, a friend list to make sure that they see everything that you do. This is where everybody's heard of the old Facebook algorithm. So Jessica and I are friends. If Jessica posts something and I wanna make sure I see everything that Jessica posts, I need to go to her profile and I need to make sure that I'm following her. Jessica, do you want to maybe go to one of our profiles and do that for everybody so that they can see what that looks like? Well, I thought it was right here under that. Maybe it's under here. Yeah, so I am following. And then if you make it favorites, Jen, I think that's what the option is that yes. favorites yeah. will make, yeah. So it's, um, so as soon as you become their friend, you're following them. But when you select favorites, that means that they're always gonna be at the top of your newsfeed. Okay. Are there any other questions? I hope that answered that Dave for you. And I think, that is everything that I was going to go over on Facebook. Jen is going to take it over now, and she's going to go over groups and events in Facebook. Yes. So um, Jessica is going to navigate for me um, so that we can keep looking at her screen. Um, if you look at the top, you can see that there's a little house icon, and next to that are two little people. That is your group icon. If you click on that, it'll take you to, oh, I'm sorry, that's your friends. Um, where is groups? So now Jessica's browser looks different from my browser. There it is. <laughs> Three little friends is a group. Thank yep. you, Facebook. Um, groups are very helpful in Facebook because you can get um, friends that feel the same way about different issues, um, people you like to um, have hangouts with, you want to keep up with, you can create a specific group for certain people. So you can either create a group or you can always join a group. There's no limit of groups that you can join. Um, and once you join a group, 
everything that happens in that group is going to show up in your feed. So you can keep up with people in a very special way. Um, so if you want to join a group, it'll, it's the same way as searching for friends or organizations. So once you get into this group section here with the three little people, um, you go over to your search groups engine here and you look for a group name. So if you are looking for any old group about Medicare for All, you can just type in Medicare for All. It will show you groups um, that you could be connected to through friends. It can show you things that are local. It can show you things on the other side of the world, just depending on what you're looking for. Um, you can look in groups and depending on their settings, sometimes you can see what's happening and sometimes they're private and you have to ask to be added to them. For the purpose of this, Jessica and I actually created a group to show you all um, and it's called Advocates for Single Payer Workshop Group. Very niche, very specific to us here today. Um, so if you type in Advocates for Single Payer slash Workshop Group, Michael raised his hand. Oh, Michael, um, if you wanna go ahead, if you have a question for us. Oh, John Crossan has a question. How do we reach people we want to convince on a topic, but they are not friends with us? Ooh, that is a great question. Um, Unfortunately, if, yeah, sorry, Jen, go ahead. <laughs> oh, oh no, I was just gonna say, it is very hard to get people who are not your friends to see your content. Mm -hmm. I would say the sneakiest way to do that is if you have, for example, a family member or many family members that don't have the same political views that you do. Um, and you post, for example, a news article, you can tag your family member in it. Um, if you know that they have a lot of people that they're friends with on Facebook that would see that. So if you, so for example, my brother, if I saw a news article about how America has the worst healthcare in the world for industrialized nations, I could put a link on in my post and tag my brother. If I tag my brother, it's gonna go on my brother's feed. And so my brother and all of his friends that don't believe in such silly, you know, nonsense, they're gonna see that. So um, you have to be a little sneaky about it because getting content to people who aren't your friends, it, it's hard. Um, but that is the one way that I know of. Jessica, do you have any other tips or tricks on that? So another way would be utilizing hashtags and making sure that your post is public. So I'm gonna go back out of this real quick and I'm gonna go back to um, Healthcare for All Minnesota's page and I'm gonna show you, John, how to do that. So we went back to our news feed. I went back to my search bar and I'm, go to I'm going to go to Healthcare for All Minnesota's page. And I'm gonna go to this post and I'm gonna share it. And when I share this to my news feed, you see this button right here where it's friends. If I change that to public, it is going to put it out there for everyone and I'm going to utilize hashtags so that when somebody clicks on a hashtag, this will come up in the feed um, as a post associated to that hashtag. So let's type in Medicare for all and then click post. And I make sure that you have that setting as public. Now, if I type in hashtag Medicare for all and click on it, well, of course it's not gonna show up now, but <laughs> it is in there somewhere. So that is another way, John, for your content to get out there to um, people that are not your friends. Because if you click on that setting, showing as a public and then utilizing the hashtag, it'll get it out there. Hope that helps. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to groups and we had typed in advocates for single payer workshop, right, Jen? Is that where we were? 
Yes. Okay. Yep. I'll let you um, take over from here. No problem. So again, you can create a group for your friends or you can jo join a group um, and that group can be your friends or strangers. Um, so if Jessica clicks on advocates for single payer workshop group, um, you can see any information that's been posted about the group. Um, so for example, this one, I just created it as an example. Um, this group, we could make about Facebook uh, questions like how do I post? Can you give me a reminder about how to add an image? Things like that. Um, so people who have a similar uh, content need or uh, want, desire, um, if we wanted to join a group, all you do is go to the blue join group button. Jen, there are a couple questions before we do that. Oh, sure. Okay. So back to the hashtags, I wondered about hashtag. There's no way to know if someone else has the same wording, right? No, but if you use um, like hashtag Medicare for all, um, single payer, some of those popular ones, um, they're, I mean, most likely people are going to have the same wording. I think that answers it. You and you can that? also search the wording that you're using to yes, see if yeah. anyone else has used it. Yes. Yeah. They'll tell you how many posts are associated with that. And that actually is really helpful to search for it first before using one. Because if you see that there are a million posts associated with it, your content's not going to really come up as frequently if you find, like, there's another one, hashtag M four, like the number four all, and there are less posts associated to that. So you have a greater chance of your content being seen by more people if you use um, a hashtag that is not as popular. And then would it be good then to have an advocacy page if you are going to be public? Because can't everyone then see all of your private content? Get my advocacy page. Um, Jen, do you want to answer that one? Which like, advocacy page, like a like a. So um, I think Jill's question is having a separate profile. Um, Facebook can be tricky about allowing one person to have more than one account. Mm -hmm. um, you can do that um, if you have two different email addresses. So um, if I wanted to have a Medicare for All Jenny page, I would need to have a separate email account from my personal email account. Um, and then you would just need to make sure that your friends knew, hey, this is, it's me. <laughs> but yes, you, you can do that. I feel like you actually um, having that mix of friends and family uh, photos and posts and things like that scattered in with your advocacy content, I feel like that might actually have a greater reach with people um, because you're a more well-rounded individual and the more things they see of yours that they interact with, the more things they're going to see, if that makes sense. So um, you know, if Jessica posts a really cute picture of her puppy and I click on it, Facebook is going to say, oh, Jen really likes seeing Jessica's content. We're going to show her everything that Jessica's posting. So yep. then when Jess posts about an event for Medicare for All, I'm going to see that. So it's definitely an option. It's a way that you can go. You can have a public and a private account, or you can have one account that you manipulate your settings for. So both are good options. Yep. So that kind of leads to um, the next two questions. So Sharon has a question, when you use public, will it also go to your friends? And yes, it goes to everyone. And then Jill followed up with, maybe I don't understand how public public is and it's everyone. So um, anyone out there that can search for, um, if they're using hashtags to search, if you're using, if you're using a hashtag in a post, then it'll come up and, um, if you do not have privacy settings on your profile, then yes, all of your information is public. And that is anyone searching. So if everyone out there, so if it's everyone out there, what do I do for security? Then you would just have to um, create settings 
and maybe not select public for yourself if you don't want everyone seeing that. And that would be going back to what Jen was talking about utilizing friend lists. I hope that helps Jill. And Jill, I can, um, you know, Jen and I can help offline with this too, going over more settings if you want um, within your profile, just to make sure that you feel comfortable and secure with what you're sharing. Um, Jill makes a very good point about um, being careful with what you share on social media. Um, yes, things you don't want to share on social media. Um, it, it's different for different people. There are some people who put their phone numbers and their addresses on social media because they feel like they want anybody to be able to contact them. There are others like myself who put very little on there. I don't want people to have my birthday. Some people don't care if other people have their birthday. I'm a little more um, worried about things like identity theft. So I don't add my full uh, birth date on Facebook. So that is something you want to consider um, prior to posting. And I always, I have a goddaughter who is 18 and I always tell her, if you don't want your grandma to see it, don't put it on social media because <laughs> everything, you know, people can take screenshots of things. Um, so, I would say private is a very, very loose term for when you're sharing things with friends. So yes, always be aware of what you're sharing on social media and the people can comment and um, you might have to, you know, uh, have a conversation further than what you post. So good, very, very good notes, Jill. Thank you so much. Um, um, so yes, so just finishing up on groups, um, you can join other single parent groups, you can join, you know, uh, grandparent groups, you can join dog walking groups, um, join us in the park on Thursdays groups, so anything. So once you have clicked the blue join button, you can also use the button next to it that says plus invite, and you can have your friends join the same group as well. So if I joined this group and I was like, Jess will love this, she'll want to be involved, I can click the checkbox next to her name and send her an invite by clicking the button at the bottom. So now that we've joined Advocates for Single Payer Workshop group, whenever anything is posted in this group, whether it's by a member or the person who started the group, it's going to show up in our main feed. Um, if you would like to create a group for say um, current Medicare for all news and you want to keep all the content in one place, creating a group, you can share things from the group to your profile. Um, so there's a lot of ways that you can, you know, share things across Facebook um, and get people involved. It is a great, great tool. And as you can see, it's tricky. <laughs> and the more you use it, the easier it gets, and like, and we are here to help. So as you as you become, you know, acclimated, and you run into things for the first time, you can always feel free to reach out to us, and we're happy to help you with your advocacy journey. Question from how can you from Avid? Can you delete a group? So one that you've created, or do you want to? remove yourself from a group. We can, we can show both. So if you don't want to be a part of this, okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> if you don't want to be a part of this one, you just simply leave group, or if you still want to be a part of it, but you just really don't want to see notifications from them anymore, anything on your news feed from them, then you can do unfollow. There are both those options. Then if you have created a group, <clears throat> Well, I, I didn't set this one up so I can't delete it, but um, there would be an option over here because Jen, this is Jen's group, so I can't, um, but there would be an option to delete the group. And I believe with some groups, if there are members that are active in it, I, I'm not sure if you can delete it or if you have to archive it. Um, so that, that question in archiving is basically deleting a group. Yeah. Um, 
So there's a couple of options, but yes. Yeah, so if you created the group, you can kind of remove it. Um, mm -hmm. If you're just a member of the group, that isn't something you can do, but you can always yeah. leave. You can leave a group and then um, you won't see it on your feed anymore. Oh, I think there's another question. Oh, no, I think that was it. Okay. Great. So, um, if, and we kind of went over events. So I think, I think that's all that we had on our list for Facebook. Um, so please feel free to continue sending in your Facebook questions. Um, and actually, you know what, Jessica, maybe we could show um, Jill how to um, adjust privacy settings or security settings under your profile. Yeah. Uh, just so that everybody is aware how they're able to do that. Yep, so you just go to your profile. Then over here, profile and tagging settings. So here you can see, one second, I gotta move that. So here you can see there are different settings for um, your profile. You can see who can, post, who can post on your profile. Right now, the default is friends. You can edit that to only you, like if, I, don't, I mean, if you only wanted um, like yourself to be the only person that can post on it, you can select that. Who, who can see what others post on your profile? Friends is the default setting. Um, you can change it to everyone. Um, that means that if Jen posted, okay, so if you have just friends and Jen posted on my profile, only my friends will see it. But if my status was, I mean, if my setting was everyone and Jen posted on my profile, all of Jen's friends would see it, all, everyone out there. It wouldn't just be limited to my friends. So there's different settings here. You can do friends except. So if you just want to exclude certain individuals, you can do that. Specific friends, friends of friends, stuff like that. There are other options. Um, allow others to share your posts to their stories. Default is on. I'm trying to see what other, um, like, I think those are the top, like, main security ones that we should go over, though. Just the who can post on your profile and who can see what others post on your profile. Um, Jen, are there any other ones that you think that we should go through? Um, the tagging. So who can oh, see yes. posts you're tagged in? Um, that one is friends of friends, just to kind of get things outside of your immediate circle. If you don't want that, um, you can go ahead and edit that to just friends or, um, if you want it to be public, if you, you know, if somebody takes you in something, you want everybody to see it, you can do everyone. This is going to be all, you know, based upon how comfortable you are with your name and your information being out there. Yeah, and what I do for this one, um, and I, I think a lot of people actually use this setting. So I have it for friends of friends, but I also go in here and I edit this and I have it um, enabled. So if Jen were to tag me in something, a photo, any, a post or anything, I'm going to have the ability to review it before it's on my profile. I think that's a great setting to have because, I mean, there could be spam that's put out there. Um, anything that you, you just don't want on your profile. Um, or if um, back to privacy. So if my child is tagged in something at school and it has the school name or something, and I just don't want the public to know what school they go to, this is a good way that you're reviewing everything before it is out there. I think those are, those are the top ones that I utilize. Um, Jen, are there any other ones that you can think of? Um, I think the reviewing option, those are, I have those all set to, if anybody tags me in anything, I need to approve it before it posts to yes. Facebook. Yeah. Um, Jessica, do you want to just quick show everybody how you got to this just one more time? Just because I Absolutely. think this is a really important thing for people just getting started on social media. Absolutely. So again, you have those two options to get to your profile. The first way is going back to that Facebook icon in the top left, clicking on that. And then you have your profile right here. And then the other way is clicking over here and you see your profile. So there are two ways to get to your profile. Click on that icon. And now you're on your profile page. 
Again, go to these three dots, click on that, and then go to profile and tagging settings. And there are other settings over here, like how you can block people, um, public posts, stories, all other things. But these are the main settings that you're going to want, you know, you want to go in and um, edit before starting. Are there any other questions? I guess your personal settings may be different from your group organization. Yep. Okay. You already. Yes, that is correct. If you run a group or an admin page, each of those will have different settings. So yeah, so for Healthcare for All Minnesota, if you're managing a chapters page, make sure that you go in and change settings for that page as well. Okay, is that everything for um, Facebook, do you think, Jen? Yeah, I think, I think that would be a good time to jump over to Instagram for our last 10 minutes here. Perfect. Instagram, just for everybody, um, it's a lot uh, more user friendly because there it, there aren't as many options. Um, Instagram is all about photos, and so everything is just gathered around photos. So, yes, and that when you're viewing it on your desktop browser, you just need to make sure that you remember this is just viewing, saving, and sharing content on Instagram. If you want to create your own content, it needs to be done through a mobile device. That is one of the a very bad feature of Instagram <laughs> that um, you can only actually create posts on your phone. But if you just wanna go and browse, using your desktop is a great way to do that. So when you log into Instagram, the default page is your newsfeed, which is very similar to Facebook. So it's going to show you, um, a this list is constantly updated and showing you a list of statuses, photos, videos, et cetera. So you can see this is Healthcare for All Minnesota's Instagram account. And on our news feed, we have all of these posts from accounts that we follow and hashtags that we follow. And I'll go over that in Instagram as well. So you can see all the different posts. And another feature of Instagram are Instagram stories. And they are along the top, just like in Facebook. They're only there for 24 hours. And like Jen said before, it's a great way to promote events or if you're at an event and you want to show a video of what's going on or a photo, it's a great way um, to put the content out there and it kind of prioritizes that content and shows your friends that, hey, this is something that's really you know important or called an act, call to action. And one of the unique things with stories and Instagram is that yes, they're only visible at the top for 24 hours but you have the ability to make them permanent in your highlights. So if I go to Healthcare for All Minnesota's profile page, I can see at the top here, I have four different categories under highlights. I have our goals, events, our vision, and who we are. So after you have created a story, you have the ability to go in and select creating it as a highlight. So you can see these were stories to begin with, and then we saved them in our highlights. So it's a great way if you have a page and you want to highlight, you know, if you, you know, you're really passionate about Medicare for all. So you want to make sure all the posts that you've, you've put in your stories stay there, then you create a highlight here and then you save them there. I can't show you how to do it because again, this is just my um, desktop browser. So unfortunately, the only way you can do it is on your, on your phone. But if anyone wants me to go over that specifically with them, I'm happy to walk that, you know, walk you through that, you know, on your phone, you know, through a Zoom or something. But unfortunately, it's, it's hard to do that <laughs> on your desktop browser. Okay. Um, Jessica, just, yeah. just one thing here, I know, um, I apologize. I can't remember who asked the question um, about having a personal versus like a, a cause um, profile. I think the highlights feature in Instagram is a really nice way to be able to categorize your posts. Yes. Yep. Um, so, you know, if, if you're sharing thing, Medicare for all things as stories, 
and you're saving them in a category, you can make a Medicare for all category mm -hmm. um, in Instagram. Um, and I think that might be a good way to do that. Um, just keeping in mind that Instagram is more photos and less about the words that you're typing down and sharing articles and things like that. Yes. Um, but Jessica's going to go into that more here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, like you said, great way to categorize things. The thing, the main thing you just have to remember is that it has to be a story. You can't put posts in there. So you have to make your post a story and then add it to your highlights. I know that sounds confusing, but it is, it's, it's pretty simple, but it's just, I don't have the capability to show you guys that on desktop. Okay. So, um, let's go back to the search bar and let's search for a page. So let's look for PNHP Minnesota. So if you type in PNHP, it'll start to auto populate and you can click on PNHP Minnesota and it's gonna take you to their page. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is like the page. Since they already follow Healthcare for All Minnesota, it's gonna say follow back instead of um, you know like or follow the page. So you just click on that. And now you're following it. Whoops. And if you want to unfollow, it was a mistake, then you just click on unfollow right there. And Instagram does not have the um, capability for you to add them as favorites. What Instagram does is um, they have the algorithm where, like Jen was talking about before, if you're spending a lot of time on PNHP's page, or Medicare for all, whatever, you know, any subject related to this page, then they're gonna prioritize that in your feed. I think there's a question coming in. What is the point of Instagram versus Facebook? Great, great question, Jill. So um, they're just different platforms. Um, Instagram, like Jen said, is more um, photo heavy, video heavy. Um, on your feed, you're gonna see, let me go back to my feed. You're gonna see it's all images all images and Facebook is not, it could just be a post with text. So that is the main difference. And, um, and Jen, is there anything you wanted to add to it? But I mean, I think that in my, my um, experience, so that's just the main difference is it's more image and video heavy. <laughs> Yes. Yep. And so it's just, it's about the content that you want to share. Um, and it's about the content that people want to see. So um, Instagram was created so that people could share the photos from their phone. Um, mm -hmm. That's that's where it started. And it became um, a great tool after that, as people started creating graphics. Um, and so creating graphics, for example, the one that's on the screen right now, um, that our revolution, somebody, somebody made that, that, you know, wasn't something that somebody could just snap with their phone. Um, that's where it evolved to. So, um, yeah, sharing your thoughts on things, um, that's more Twitter, Facebook, sharing yeah. content in a graphic or picture form is what Instagram is geared towards. So, you know, some people do one and not the other. Some people do everything. Um, mm -hmm. And it's all just where your, your comfort is and how you like to browse content. You know, if you are someone who likes to read a lot of um, verbiage, Instagram probably isn't for you. If you want to be able to scroll and see a lot of things at a time, Instagram is great for that. Yep. And if you feel that, you know, you don't have those graphics to share, that's okay. So, you know, you can find pages like PNHP Minnesota or um, Healthcare for All Minnesota, any of those groups that are associated to single payer or Medicare for All, find those pages. And then if you go to the post, you can share it. And you have the option of sharing it to friends. And it's not showing me this option because I'm on desktop right now, but on your phone, you have the option of sharing it to your stories. So that would put it out there to everyone. So there are options as far as sharing it if you don't feel like you have this kind of heavy graphics to share. Or like Jen said, just a photo. If you're um, at an event and you wanna post, you can do that here. So you have the option of sharing, then you can comment and you can like the post. And then if you wanna save it, you click on this right here and it'll save. Um, and then you can go back to all your save posts and it'll show them in order. 
And another thing you can do similar to Facebook is um, clicking on hashtags to view the posts associated to the hashtag and follow the hashtags. So here, if we click on single payer healthcare, it's a little slow, sorry. It'll take you to all the posts associated to single payer healthcare. And then if I click follow, then it's gonna show me all of the posts associated to that hashtag in my newsfeed. And I think that is everything that I wanted to show in Instagram. Is there anything else, Jen, that you can think of that I missed? Um, no, I think I think one great thing about Instagram that, that we should highlight is that following of the hashtags. Yes. Uh, excuse me, that's something that you're not able to do on Facebook. You can always search different hashtags, but it won't automatically pop up in your feed. That's one great thing about Instagram is you can you can follow tons and tons of hashtags. Yep. And then whenever any user anywhere creates content and hashtags it, you see it. Um, uh, oh, and we have a couple of questions. It looks like Ann Jones asks, what is the difference between followers and following? In Instagram, the two numbers are different for Healthcare for All Minnesota. That is a great question. It so is. followers are people who are watching what we post mm -hmm. and following is what we're watching. So um, because we are both um, creating content and absorbing other people's content, that's why there's that differentiation there. Because who we're watching and who's watching us are different. Great question. I hope that made sense. But did that make sense, Jessica? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Okay. <laughs> and I did forget to show how you can search for the hashtags here. I just showed you how to click on it from a post. So if you go to your search bar, you can type in um, any hashtag, like just hashtag. Let's try that M for all. You can see there's 805 posts associated to this. And then you can go down and you can see the different posts that have this hashtag in here. And again, you can follow it and so that it's prioritized on your newsfeed. Dr. Crossan asked, how long can videos be? On and I think that's a, an Instagram question. Yep, so um, that is a great question, John, and I didn't go over that. So um, in addition to posts, there are reels in IGTV. In reels, depending on your account, can be from 30 seconds to 60 seconds. I think that they have rolled it out 60 seconds for all accounts, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, and reels are a great way to create a short clip about, like for instance, this was um, Healthcare for All Minnesota at Pride. So putting images and um, short clips into one video highlighting maybe an event coming up. Jen created one for um, this Lunch and Learn series for the first workshop. So that's a great way to utilize Reels. IGTV has a longer limit and I don't know what it is. Um, Jen, do you know at the top of your head or if you could Google real quick? I think it's um, five minutes, but I'm not sure. And that would be a great place um, for a more um, extensive topic. If you wanted to share more about Medicare for all and you wanted more than a minute, that's where you would post that. And Instagram is putting more emphasis on Reels and IGTV. So that stuff is going to be higher up in people's news feeds right now because that's just, they're prioritizing that content because they're trying to compete with um, TikTok, which is another platform, which um, is, is only videos. And it looks like IGTV can be up to 60 minutes. Oh, okay. A lot yeah, more than they, five minutes. That's higher yeah. than I remember it being. I think they are really trying to compete by offering the, the, the lightning talks on the reels and then the longer video sessions on the IGTV. Yes. Yep. Yes. Great question, John. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, Jill asks, for advocacy, Facebook will allow for the actual policy points but Instagram and Twitter are the talking points without the depth? That's a great question, Joe. Um, I would say uh, you do have more opportunity on Facebook because you can post links 
um, to external articles or anything. Um, you can share videos, photos, um, you know, graphics, you can share commentary via text. So I think you do have a breadth of options for how you share things. People have found ways to get around that on Instagram and Twitter. Um, we'll talk about um, on Twitter, you can tweet in sequentially and have things all in one post to get more content. Um, and we'll talk more about that in two weeks. And then on Instagram here, I think creating graphics um, that have text in them, um, and also putting descriptions of the photo. Uh, for example, if you had a photo of Ilhan Omar speaking, um, and then in your, your post text, you could say, this is Ilhan supporting Medicare for all. She supports HR 1976. Um, it's, there's ways to, to sneak in policy um, content for sure in all of the platforms. It is, I would say, easiest on Facebook. That's just my own personal. Um, what would you say to that, Jessica? No, I agree. It's, I, everything that you said, 100% accurate. And then Anne had another question or suggestion, and I think it's a great one. Should we ask everyone on the call to go and make sure they're following HCAM on Facebook and Instagram? and to help us get more followers. Yes, yes, please find um, Healthcare for All Minnesota and Physicians for a National Health Program Minnesota um, on these platforms, because the more people that like our pages and follow our content and share our content, um, our posts, share our events, share our groups, share everything that's happening. That is how we have that exponential growth and that's how our message spreads. So if you are really uncomfortable creating posts, if you're uncomfortable finding photos to share on Instagram, you can be a great advocate just by um, being a sound, just by um, amplifying our message. So even if you never create anything, you can help our movement just by sharing the things that other people are posting. And whether that's sharing it to your page, inviting friends to things, to inviting them to pages or inviting them to events, every little action that you do, it's kind of like the flap of the butterfly's wings. Um, you can, just by sharing and inviting, you can really get people's attention on what we're doing. So I agree. So, and yeah, and thanks ahead. for suggesting that. And maybe, you know, um, I think I could stop sharing and Jen can put up her PowerPoint presentation and she can show the links and we could, we'll send that out afterwards as well, but maybe we could, um, put a little goal out there. So in addition to liking it, if you could invite a couple friends that are interested in the movement and have them invite them to like our page as well, that would be fantastic. Yeah, and it'd be a way to practice what you've learned too. <laughs> yes, so these are the links um, to get to our pages on the different platforms. So I apologize, I did not put m as on here. Um, and when we send out our, our notes from the presentation today, we can absolutely add there uh, because they are a great organization to follow. They post multiple times a day on Facebook um, and they also have content on Twitter and Instagram. Um, and the more you're on these, these platforms, the more you'll see the people whose content you actually want to watch. Um, and you can unfollow people if they're showing you things that you're just not interested and they don't know that you unfollow them. So you don't have to worry about them getting like a notification like, Jessica thinks Jen's content is boring. You know, when you unfollow, it's a private thing that you do. And so, you know, if you see that um, Dr. Adam Gaffney is posting things consistently on Twitter and you like his messaging, follow his stuff. And the more you look at it, the more it's going to show you that that tricky algorithm. Just when you see something you like, make sure you click on it because then you're going to see it more is the is the easiest way to share that message. Yep. So we'll send all of these links out in our follow-up email. Um, and we thank you so much for joining us today. We really hope that you got a lot out of this, that you feel um, 
more excited to engage and give it a try. And remember, everybody makes mistakes when they first, first start doing uh, social media. Um, and remember to sign up for our next workshop if you're interested in Twitter. That is happening in two weeks. So that's Wednesday, September 1st at noon. And we're going to be talking about everything Twitter. Um, and so that should be a really exciting one. If you have questions that you come across with Facebook and Instagram, we'll save a little bit of time at the end of that workshop to circle back to this as well. So feel free to join us. Wonderful. Well, I don't see any other questions and I don't see anything else in the chat. So we will wrap it up for today. And again, we thank everyone for joining us. Again, feel free to reach out to us anytime at our emails, at the organization emails, and we're happy to help you on your advocacy journey. So thank you so much, everybody. Have a really good day. Thank you. Goodbye.